Hi everyone, this is Dr. Peggy Simmingson. I'm talking in this video about asynchronous learning and some options for creating or finding content that students can participate with in non-real time. That means as they have time. So I'm gonna talk mainly about Canvas because that's the tool we have where I work. Again, it's non-real time. You have to decide if you want to create content or if you want to curate content or both. I do both. I like to make short videos like the one I'm making now. It can be sharing information. You can be doing a demonstration. That's particularly useful if you're in a class that lends itself to showing and demonstrating. So I'm in teacher education, so I tend to do a lot of demonstrations. These are videos that students can watch over and over because they may not get it the first time. So I suggest thinking about creating your own short video content or creating a short video series. I'm also going to suggest that micro learning is useful. So keeping content short and sweet, but having those co that content kind of in a series that's logical to your content and that aligns with your competencies in your course, your outcomes. Another thing you can do in Canvas is you can create text-based pages. Now you don't want that wall of text, so you want to interrupt it with something interactive, maybe it's a question um, or a discussion board or something. You just don't want them to read only text. So again, I'm gonna go back to suggesting you can use the tool called Canvas Studio. And the great thing about Canvas Studio is you can just do it right on your computer. You can also record your screen or you can make a video like I'm doing now. And it will easily embed and it has accessibility options. So it will auto generate captions that you can go in and fix. Um, another thing is email is a great way to share information. Again, in my last video, I suggested that you wanna be careful because they may be getting bombarded with email, um, but use it judiciously. And you can also send reminders through email. You can point students towards new content. If they have the Canvas mobile app, you can encourage them to set up their settings so that they get alerts when new content is posted on Canvas. Another kind of default or generic assignment you can do for asynchronous learning on Canvas is the good old discussion boards. Think about guiding questions you could post for students to do in small groups. It depends on what your class size is. You can have open-ended questions where they, you know, where it's more critical thinking type thing. Um, I generally give them a week to respond and then three to five replies to peers is fairly standard for an expectation. Also consider that some of the learning you'll be doing in this time frame, you might just want to have it be participatory or informal learning. So let me give you some examples of that. If you want to, you could, you could have your students create a blog where they keep track of um, thoughts about the readings and things like that. We have a blog service at UTA it's called Maverick Blog, and so check that out. I use Teams as an informal back channel, so students can share ideas, post questions. It's kind of a running kind of question and answer board. I set up a Teams area for my class. You can certainly do this on Canvas as a discussion thread. You could say Q&A, question and answer board, um, that kind of thing. But what I like about Teams is you can do fun, fun and engaging things like set up a poll and that kind of thing. So students are checking into the class. And I remind my students check into the class daily, just check in daily. So discussions, video, creating short amount of content on the module area. I want to talk about the three parts of online learning that might help you. This is the community of inquiry model. So we have three parts, teacher presence, social presence, and cognitive presence. And you want all of those included in online learning. So social presence is setting up an area, like I was saying, like the back channel where students can kind of have like a virtual water cooler and just talk to each other and that kind of thing. And some of them do this anyway on their own, but it's good to have it housed in your class. So you could have a general back channel and teams or a general discussion board on um, Canvas to enhance the social presence. I've even done virtual icebreakers for students just to go in and type a comment and that kind of thing on an informal question. Um, social presence builds cohesion and trust amongst your students so you'll get more out of them. 
as you interact online. Teacher presence is you getting in the class, creating content. A video is a great way to enhance the teacher presence, giving feedback to students and that kind of thing. So teacher presence and then cognitive presence. So that's kind of the rigor and problem solving focus of your class that might be present in discussions where they're doing joint problem solving or collaboration on a shared task. So again, asynchronous doesn't have to be boring. It doesn't just have to be reading through modules and take a quiz. It doesn't just have to be discussion boards. You really want to get students engaged in content in a variety of ways. So it's gonna depend on your class. I really like the idea of uh, short video content that's in a series of videos.